Okay, so my little session today that I'm going to be running is about collaboration in teams. Now, in terms of collaboration, I just think that that is a word that's re really driving some of the change that I want to see in my students, being able to collaborate in better ways than they previously have before. And of course, we have some amazing tools that we have available now to enable that. So the one that I'm going to be speaking about today, good morning, is Microsoft Teams. Uh, I'm the head of ICT integration at All Saints College. I think the slides are up here. And uh, it's my job to help with kids and uh, with the staff on developing this, developing collaboration and uh, a number of different other things that I'm going to be talking about in another session. But really focusing today on what teams can do that collaborative element. So why Microsoft Teams? I love Teams. And this is kind of going through the reasons why I really like Microsoft Teams. Uh, it really is about, because we're bringing together a number of disparate products that we all use a lot of the time and bringing them together in one thing. So we've got Outlook. Now we all know email, we use email a lot. Outlook is kind of the foundation product that we use to do emails. So with conversations in team and chat in teams, that kind of replaces that and that's what we're trying to do. I heard someone yesterday talk about an email to school internally. That would be pretty cool, because I don't know if your life's driven by email, but mine is. Skype, uh, calling features, being able to call and, and communicate and chat with people over Skype is really awesome. Um, you've got OneNote. We all know about OneNote and the power of OneNote and the collaborative elements in OneNote. Uh, it's a tool unlike anything else I've used in the classroom. Fantastic, I love it. And all of our teachers use OneNote fantastically. And also, uh, OneDrive. So being able to store and share files. So think of all of these different things that I use a lot in my Microsoft ecosystem, all of those in one place in Microsoft Teams. That's awesome, and that's why I love this product, why I've really made an effort for our school community to say, hey, get on board with using Microsoft Teams. Okay, so first of all, I want to start with conversations. Conversations in Teams, you can see them all happening in one place. They're kind of more social, so for students, they're very much used to this social thing, a threaded conversation, uh, they're still really functional though, so you can still add attachments. Students love emojis, you can do memes, you can do all kinds of things in the conversation space in Teams that students normally will not do in an email. So I've found that as I've tried to transition my class to using Teams from email, some rich and cool things are going on that haven't been going on before. Um, meetings in Teams, very cool. Oh, so this, here's... Um, an example of the conversations going on, for those of you who haven't seen Teams. So you can see uh, there at the bottom, if I want to start a new conversation, I can, uh, attachments, I've got the little emoji character going, I can do all kinds of things with my conversations in Teams that you could do with email as well, but it's a different thing. Uh, meetings. Let's have a look here at the meeting section in Teams. So you're going to get your full uh, meetings experience that you normally could. You can create meetings that are uh, right on the fly or you can do something called meet now. So I can, I'm showing you now what it looks like to meet now with your team. So if people are still offside, and we often have this at our school with our team, people might be away at certain times so they can meet, they can join this meeting from many different places from Outlook and now we're in a meeting. That's not me, someone else joining a meeting. So I can mute my mic. The meeting can be going on with different people inside the team. I can turn off the camera if I want to and just have one person talking at a time. While I'm in the, involved in that meeting, I can share a screen or anybody in that meeting is able to share their screen. So this allows the team from places to have conversations, uh, which is fantastic if you're not all in the same place at the same time. You can record your meeting. That meeting then gets recorded and sits in your team space so that you can review the meeting later, especially for the people who weren't able to go. So I find that the meeting section in Teams is awesome. And again, it all happens in the same place in the conversation section in Teams. Um, you can invite other people to the meeting. By default, anyone in that team is able to jump in and join that call. Uh, but you can have chats while the call is going on with emojis and all of that sort of thing. So uh, I, I love the meeting space in Teams. It's really, really cool. Um, you can minimize the... Um, call as well so you can go back to your full experience that you're used to seeing in Teams. Uh, that can be minimized and then you can make that bigger and smaller again. You can share files. All of that stuff can be going on all in the same place. And then we're leaving the call. And that call then can be saved which is really awesome. Okay, so meetings in Teams allows you to collaborate again in ways that, uh, that is really cool that I haven't seen going on before. 
Um, you can also use Microsoft Whiteboard. So if you're not familiar with Whiteboard, Whiteboard is really, really cool. So this is an example of in a call, in a meeting, collaborating in the Whiteboard app and being able to use that, which is really cool. Uh, the calendar, so you've got this full calendar experience coming out with Teams really soon. So rather than just the, a mini calendar that has your appointments, all of your calendar items in Outlook will come into one place, which is really, really cool. So it's going to be looking like that, and that is going to be coming in Teams really soon. Uh, the thing that I love also, opportunity to collaborate on files in Teams. So with the file section in Teams, you get a great structure, so you can have folders, within folders, within folders, like you're normally used to. You can so collaborate together on those folders. You can sync all of those files and folders to your PC, get links to documents and share them with other team members or share them externally. Um, you can create Word documents, Excel documents, uh, PowerPoint documents in that file section so you don't have to just import them and drag them in. They can be created directly in there. And you can upload and store large files. So my group of students that I'm working with we're working on a video project. I create a folder in Teams and that's where all of their work goes. And that's just a great place, again, so rather than having a folder in OneDrive, which we could use, all of our stuff is in Teams. Everybody can see it. Everyone can collaborate on those files, which is great. I just want to show you an image of um, what it looks like in Teams. So this is my Innovate Ed Year 8 2019 group. This is just one part of the file section. You can see that first folder there, which is brand new and just appeared not is called class material. That is anything that I put in there is read only for the students. So normally all the files in there are able to be edited by anyone on the team, which is great. So the Word document you see there at the bottom, quizzes, anyone on the team can collaborate on that document. They could open it in Word, work on it, it gets saved back to the team. Awesome. So we can collaborate on those. But some files and some folders the teacher said, man, oh, maybe I don't want the, uh, the, the students to be able to collaborate on. Oh, they can put that in the class materials folder that becomes read-only by default, which is really cool. There's the same folder of now looking at an, in, an explorer view, a uh, normal view that people are used to, and you'll notice that the files are exactly the same. So I can sync everything that I have in my team to my computer, works really, really seamlessly. So teachers and students that are used to working within their file explorer window can do that and sync that to their computer as well. Anything that I put in this folder here will automatically be synced back to my team really works really seamlessly, it's great. So files and collaborating on files is awesome in Teams. You can have guests involved in your team. So imagine bringing in a guest speaker or a guest presenter or a guest to be part of your team that you're working with. So we've done that um, in my class, asked an ex-student who was an engineering student, hey, can you come in and mentor some of our students around the work that they're doing? We just added him to our team. He had access to all of our materials. He was able to jump into the conversations. It was really, really cool to have a guest speaker as part of the team, um, you know, more authentically than just bringing him to the classroom. He, he gave, she came to the classroom, but he also was able to have an ongoing conversation with my students, which is really cool. We all know, or hopefully we all know what OneNote does in my class. So I'm able to share, uh, and the, the feedback loop with OneNote is unlike anything else I've ever used with my students, you know. So I can, I can annotate on their work, they get that straight away. I can leave voice comments, I can even leave a little video saying, hey, great stuff there, whatever, and that all syncs up perfectly in OneNote. So OneNote lives inside Teams. So here's a view of one of the teams that I'm involved in. You can see the OneNote lives with inside that team. Some students prefer that to open that OneNote in the normal OneNote app and work from it from there. Fine, a lot of people just use OneNote from directly within Teams. It sits there seamlessly, it comes as part of the team and you get all the benefits of that. And um, lastly, you can control all the permissions of what kind of collaboration you want to have going on. So if you want the uh, members of the team to be able to create and update channels or not, you can, you can choose that. So there is a lot of options that you get with uh, how people in your teams can interact and the way that you want them to interact, either as guests or as uh, people that are members of the team. So in this case here, I'm saying anyone can post on the team, anyone can collaborate and join in that team, but we just it's probably want to give you a message that, hey, this message is going out to 150 students or whatever. So, uh, or at some, in some teams, it might just be the owners of the teams that can post messages. But for my class team, I love the collaboration and the uh, back and forth in the conversations that I get uh, through the, the conversation space in teams.
and I actually really encourage my students to get going on that. I actually demand them to get going. So I'll put up a post and I say, hey, please, I want you to comment and start answering questions in, that, in this uh, comment thread. And what happens, the magic that happens, is that students start ask, asking questions and it's not me that starts answering the questions, it's other students. So that can happen outside of the classroom. I want my classroom to not just be, you know, for that 50 minutes during the day, I want it to happen over the course of the day or whenever my students want to participate. So Teams is the hub that allows that and makes that happen.